Broadcasting nationwide, this is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. That's one Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, here's Tom Gresham. All right, all right. We are following one of the big stories that's going on. You know, some politicians have the guts to actually ban guns, and some say, well, let's find a back door. What if you said, well, we're going to require a technology that simply does not exist, where well, every gun has to have this, and you can't sell it without this non-existent technology? Would that not, in fact, be a bit? In fact, it would be absolutely a gun ban. Well, I'll tell you what, a couple of days, three days ago, we had a chance to talk with the CEO of Ruger, Mike Pfeiffer, about all of this and what's going on with micro stamping. Here's that interview. Well, the big news, of course, this past week, a lot of it came out of the SHOT Show, but one of the things that we learned and are now hearing is that at least two companies have decided, well, they've taken action regarding California's requirement for micro stamping. And that came about by passing a law in 2007 signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, but only recently did California say, okay, this technology is approved or whatever. Uh, So we're joined right now by Ruger's CEO, Mike Pfeiffer, with uh, the news of what Ruger's doing. Mike, tell me what's going on with micro stamping and Ruger. Tom, we're being forced off the list by the California DOJ. They've taken this law that sounded innocent enough when they first passed it, where you have to prove that your gun is not unsafe. How do you like that double negative? Not unsafe. Sounds Orwellian. Because they don't want to say a gun is safe because that sounds like they're proving it. So they say it's not unsafe. So for years now, we've been doing just that. We've been meeting all the requirements, passing all their tests, submitting our guns regularly to the lab. And we've, we've felt that we have met both the letter and the spirit of the law. They've now changed how they're looking at everything. And they've that if you make any changes in that gun whatsoever, they don't mean just design changes, but any change, how you make it, how you process it, how you assemble it, how you, you know, any material content, anything whatsoever, you have to resubmit the gun as a brand new gun. It's not the same gun anymore. Even if all the parts are interchangeable, the gun functions exactly the way it did before, they don't care. For instance, if you had a safety lever, and you switch from one material to another material, you said, okay, this is going to be better. Some kind of, we're going to do an improvement in the gun. You have to start over with them. Let's say you made the material stronger. Let's say it was a, um, you know, reinforced nylon uh, part and you made it a stronger nylon. Doesn't matter. You're starting from scratch. And the problem is, in the meantime, they've slipped in this micro stamping, which doesn't work doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, a lot of people attack micro stamping by saying, well, it's easily defeated. You just take a little uh, nail file and on the end of the firing pin and you're done. Right. But that assumes you could actually make it work in the first place. And you can't make it work. Okay. Explain why, well, first of all, explain what micro stamping is and then why it doesn't work. I believe the intent was to have a unique serial number associated with that gun show up two places on the brass. It would show up on the primer and somewhere else on the brass. And that's a pretty hard engineering feat to pull off. We've all seen issues where there's uh, hard primers or soft primers, brass that's hard, brass that's soft. Has the brass been reloaded or not? Has it been used before? They're assuming you can make these tiny microscopic little marks on it that are unique to each and every single gun for each and every single manufacturer. On brass, it comes in all kinds of different shapes. I mean, are different materials, Mm -hmm. and it can't be done. And then the next step is, even if it could be done, then every little police department in California would have to have a million-dollar electron scanning microscope. I don't think a single one of them has that, much less all of them. So they couldn't couldn't read it anyway. This is reminiscent of when a couple of states, I think Maryland and New York, passed laws that said we had to save um, brass from every single gun we shipped. We'd have to shoot it couple rounds, we'd have to ship one one empty case with the gun, and we'd have to keep one for further use in solving crime. And not one single crime has ever been solved that way. And in fact, uh, one of the big states that did it just finally dropped the whole thing. And I think perhaps Maryland is the only state left still doing it. You would have to change this information. 
that is put on the firing pin and maybe on the breech face or something on every single gun. So instead of just running guns through the process, now you have to have a specific firing pin matched to that gun, matched to that breech face or wherever you put the, uh, the identifying mark. If it could work, assuming it could work, it would run the cost up. I don't know how much. Well, it has the, the net effect of denying people their Second Amendment rights. That's, that's the bottom line. California DOJ has figured out this is a great way to get guns out of California, which goes way beyond the spirit and intent of the original law. It has nothing to do with whether guns are safe or not unsafe, and it's really purely a political play, and it's wrong. It's unethical, it's wrong, and we're going to have to fight it. And we are fighting it, but it's going to take it's going to take litigation. Sadly, there's no easy, quick cure fix to it. And Smith and Wesson and Ruger aren't the first and only ones. Over time, this is going to hit every single manufacturer of semi-automatic handguns in the country. Well, so the the gun buyers, the the citizens of California, are going to be denied semi-automatic pistols because of this. Yes, my prediction is within a year or two, they're all gone. Everything's off the list. And one thing to note: there have been no new guns submitted and passed since the uh, implementation of the micro stamping back in May of 2013. Not one. Wow. And, and we know there have been a, a lot of new guns introduced. You guys have introduced uh, new guns, and you simply you're not submitting them. So have you officially notified California, or are you just saying, hey, we're just not going to submit anything? No, no. We've, it's been mischaracterized that we've decided not to resubmit anymore. That's complete baloney. We're sending every single gun in for testing. They pass all the tests, except obviously micro stamping, because it doesn't exist. It doesn't work. Then we're trying to get the test labs to submit those to the California DOJ, and the California DOJ is pushed back on the test labs and say, unless it passes micro stamping, we don't even want to see the paperwork. So we're trying to get them all back on. You're trying to get them in, and they're blocking it and saying, no, if it doesn't have this mythical technology, then we're not going to allow it in. Where do we go from here with the litigation? Tom, I think there's a ray of hope in what just happened in Chicago, where I believe a judge ruled that if you don't even let the citizens buy the guns, you're denying them their Second Amendment right. And I think that's probably the angle that's going to ultimately work in California. I sure hope it is. What are you hearing from customers? Well, they're very, very disappointed and frustrated, and they just don't understand it because it it defies logic. So then they assume it's some sort of conspiracy, but it's not. It's just folks in California at the DOJ that have taken and gone way beyond the spirit or letter of the law and are using this now to push an anti-gun rights agenda. I would offer that it is a conspiracy, but it's a conspiracy by California bureaucrats. So, okay, Ruger is submitting guns. They're simply not allowing them to be accepted. Oh, and we should point out, by the way, uh, law enforcement in California is exempt from this regulation, right? Well, that's a whole other issue. And uh, and we do get uh, consumers that are upset with us for selling the law enforcement. It turns out it's a really, really tiny portion of our sales. So it doesn't, one way or the other, it doesn't have much economic impact on us. Mm-hmm. But it's a, that's a tough ethical quandary. Um, if you remember back a year or so ago, there was a, a big shootout. Um, I think it was a... A former Navy SEAL, unfortunately, right, who right. Uh, was attacking the police. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that happened was that the particular sheriff's department that finally got him uh, ran out of magazines. Wow. And so right after this happened, they ordered 300 more magazines from Ruger for their mini 14. Well, what do I do? Do I try to stand up for the rights of all the civilians in California and say, I'm going to deny the police? Or do I say, look, these are... These cops aren't politicians. They're good guys out here helping and serving the community. They're trying to protect the citizens. They got caught in a bind, and they they needed more magazines. And you can't have them running out of ammo in the middle of a fight with a guy who's determined to kill them. So, yeah, it's uh, I understand it's a tough place for you to be. And I think, uh, honestly, when consumers give this a second or third thought, they're going to look at this and say, okay, the fault lies in California. That's That's where the issue is. And they simply have to get more involved, those that aren't already, in the political process, because this is a political action. This is done merely, as you say, this is pure politics. And there are many, and I do believe this, that think the idea behind this move in California is, let's see how many guns we can prevent from coming into the state. I'm sure it's purely political, and all our 
our anger and efforts have to be at changing the political situation there. It's not the cops, you know, it's not the citizens, and it's not the gun companies. It's the politicians who are out to deny us our gun rights, and we have to go after them, and we have to either change their behavior or change them. Another thing I want to ask you, there are other states, are there not, that use the California roster as their list? Uh, Tom, I'm not really sure about that. I understand that Washington, D.C. Um, uses the whole micro stamping thing. They're trying to stay in touch or in, aligned with California, but I'm not sure who else uses the California list or if they use it exactly the way it is or if they modify it on their own. But, but it could be uh, one of those things that other states would say, well, look, this is the California list. Let's adopt it. I guess wh- where I'm going with that is this should be of concern to all gun owners across the country. Oh, absolutely, because there's other states with a, a lot of anti-gun folks in their state senates, for example, the state of New York, who are trying to get uh, micro-stamping passed. Connecticut's tried hard to pass it. I know there are other states that are going to do it, especially when they see the success in California, the anti-gun crowd. All right, so where does Ruger go from here? I mean, what's is there a, a, an end game, or is it just we have to do what we're doing right now? For the short term, we're going to keep submitting guns. We're going to keep trying to get them on the list. We're hoping that California will blink. But I think the answer is going to be more long-term. We're going to get involved in litigation. We're going to go after California. We're going to join the other lawsuits, and we're going to fight this. And, you know, I'm confident someday we're going to win. And I know you, and I just want other people to know, uh, above everything else, yeah, you, you're you a CEO of a gun company, but you're also a gun guy. You get this on a more basic level than how many units can we sell. Oh, that's absolutely right. We've got to protect our rights, and it's going to start right here in California. Here's, this is the fight today. Mike, thanks for uh, spending some time with us, and uh, keep us posted if you would. I will, Tom. Thank you.